right, check out what we got today, everybody. Got a 72 GTO, little 10 second race car. And it has a, what engine is this, Jay? There's Jay. This is a uh, 462 slash 467. Uh, let me repeat that. It's 462 slash 467. I think that's too far away. I don't have a, a mic that clips on yet. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it runs pretty good. We're going to do a few things today that we noticed at the racetrack last week. Um, we put a charger on this thing between every round. I don't know why because it does have an alternator. So, you see that big old giant pulley on there? I'm not a fan of those. Those tend to not keep the battery charged very well in my experience anyway maybe they work fine for you but uh, he had a problem with this thing last year too the battery went dead after a few rounds and that happened again this weekend after a few rounds even though we're putting a battery charger on between rounds it still went dead there's a setup back there we even have a gauge back there which with the switch on and that gauge lit up tells me we have a draw on the battery as long as the switch is on which i'm not a fan of that you don't disconnect your battery when you go to this grocery store so why do you need to disconnect your battery when you're in staging lanes so anyway what we're going to do today is we're going to test the output of the alternator as it is right now we're going to check it at the alternator and then back at the battery to see uh, what kind of voltage drop we get then we're going to swap that pulley over to a small pulley and then we're going to recheck the voltage at the alternator and the voltage at the battery to see if there's a voltage drop there and then to see if there's an improvement in the voltage anyway and we're also going to check for a draw on the battery when we get this thing disconnected so uh let's begin let me get some tools handy and i'll be right back okay so what we're going to do right now is i got jay in the car he's going to start it up i'm going to check the voltage at the alternator right now and then we're going to run on to the battery and we're going to check the voltage back at the battery um, and then we'll swap pulleys so right now we've got the large pulley on so ready i'll try to put that where we can see okay jay go ahead and fire it up Okay, so we're gonna pop this alternator off. We saw what it was putting out. It kind of surprised me that the first reading on this was 25 volts. So, uh, interesting. I didn't expect to see that. I think it dropped down to 21. Anyway, kind of surprised me, but, uh, huh. But we saw the battery that we were getting 12.3 volts at the battery and then I had Jay turn the fan on and the lights on and it dropped down to 12.0 something volts so it tells me the alternator is not keeping up this wire right here is normally hot all the time 
I just checked it. I just put my test side away, but I just checked it and that does not have power right now. It only has power running, so we're safe right there. So let's get this alternator pulled off. I know ratchet wrenches and air wrenches and electric wrenches are better, but you know what? We work with what we got. Old school. Old school, that's right. Oh. That chromie was, uh, the threads were stripped out, so I had to put a longer bolt in and put a nut on the end. Yeah, it works too. Kind of looks cheesy, but you know what? It works. Yeah. You could just finish drilling it out on that other alternator and run this stud through that way and put the nut back there. That way it's kind of hidden, but oh. that's okay. We got a new alternator. This one looks better. Better than my scratched up chromie. You can't scratch up chrome. <laughs> that definitely affects ET. <laughs> well, it should just come right out. There we go. All right, let's see what we got here. Okay. All right, let's talk about alternators for a minute. So this is a large pulley that we're going to remove. And I couldn't put the small pulley on, which by the way, see how far that sits down in the groove, neat. This is a deep groove pulley also. So what does it look like on that stock pulley? Oh, here's a stock pulley, yep. Not oh. a deep groove. So if you start throwing alternator belts, that's you're either out of alignment and or you have a stretchy belt and or you have a crappy pulley. Yeah, we like the uh, deep groove pulleys. And, that, that and or you're missing a and or, and bolt or, and on or. your harmonic balancer. Yeah. Like the Le Mans was. <laughs> oh, did someone run into that already? Uh, so something else I noticed here. We're gonna do a little alternator education here. Everybody take notice. Power master, I don't care what that says. So there's no numbers on this, we don't care. So, this style of alternator, there's a 10SI GM alternator and a 12SI GM alternator. Both of them are dimensionally the same. They're exactly the same. The rear of this alternator, this section right here, is a 12SI alternator. I can tell that because of the air intake. These are large air intake holes. The front of this alternator is from a 10 SI alternator. That tells you they're dimensionally the same. I can tell this is a 10 SI front. Again, it doesn't matter, but I can tell because there's no ridge right down in here. It's hard to point to it. Matter of fact, I'll show you when I get the pulley off. And again, it doesn't matter, but when you have a higher amperage alternator, that creates more heat. It's natural byproduct. And so although air flows front to rear on your car with your alternator air flows rear to front these fans pull air through the alternator so if you had this butted up against your exhaust or something hot for instance it's pulling hot air through there sometimes you don't have a choice of the matter it's just how it is but just be aware air flow and alternators go this way so that's why higher amp alternators have a larger air intake i don't have a, a 10 si i thought i had a 10 si alternator around i could show you but a 10 SI alternator just has uh, slits. I think they go horizontal. Just small slits. They don't have very good airflow. But 10 SI alternators are usually good for up, up to about 64 or 65 amps. These 12 SI alternators are good for up to about 95-ish amps. 
So there's a school on that. So let's go swap that pulley over and uh, matter of fact, hang out right there and get my tool. Keep her running. That's the one that where to. Okay, I haven't tried this. Hopefully this has enough power. To change these uh, alternator pulleys, you just zam this little nut off. The best way to do that is grab that 15 sixteenths and hit it. Work with that. Oh. Yeah, that's Put the best a way to do it. screwdriver in there when I did it. <laughs> you hold it with I your know hand. how to mess things up. Yeah, you do. You're good at that. <laughs> that's my glove on. I can't grip anything. So let's pull that off. That should just come right off. Wow. Left my finger I messed up. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Alright, give me a minute while I get this off of here. It shouldn't be that tight. Wow. Okay. Alright, had to do a little prime to get that off. That was really tight. It didn't need to be that tight. There should be a spacer right there. Okay, whatever. Oh, so on the 12 SI housing, there's a uh, a lip right here, and 12 SI alternators have the uh, they're like a solid looking fan with blades in inside. I don't know how to explain that, uh, and they actually pull more air than these things. This is fine for what we're doing. We're just drag racing. It's not continuous use all the time, so let's make sure. Yep, that'll work. Okay. Zam this back down. We're going to put the nut back on the same way. You can see it's not shiny there. Zam it down. Just like that. Cool. Good to go. Let's pop this thing back on. Oh, we're going to need a... Uh, give your other belts, Andy. Oh! Look at those belts. Never mind, you knew exactly what we needed. I'd like to use this one. Yeah, so we will it's need not, to change the bell size. It's not we already we already knew that. Oh, Perfect. And there's a hole here somewhere. Right there. Oh come on. Got it. Got what I called for. Just to be funny, I already know this belt's not going to work. Yeah, let's get the shortest belt you got and let's see what that does. This is the one that came off. Should be using a ratchet, but you know what, that's fine. I got tough fingers. Very manly hands. Very script like fingers and manly hands. Oh, Holy crap, crap, this is a. So, those belts are a 15 series. I forget what they're called, it's been too long. But those are a 15 belt. This is a 17. This is too wide. So, it's going to defeat the purpose of our deep alternator. But if it's going to work, if it'll go on here, we can change it later. This is just going to answer questions. Oh, is that the shortest one you got? Shortest belt you got? <laughs> is this one oh shorter? Or is oh, that's the wrong belt too. Yeah. But again, if it fits, and we can tighten this up, it'll work. This belt is not only wrong, but it's been thrown before, so oh, yeah. mm. we wouldn't want to run this. That's from the harmonic balancer missing a bolt. Oh, mm. way way shorter. 
We're going to need to put a big rubber band around here or something. Go rob one off your wife's car. <laughs> off your Tesla? Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do any of these look... Alternator. That looks longer, right? Yeah, that's way long. And this, yeah, I may not have any shoes. Good thing ones. we didn't do this at the track. This is one of the reasons we didn't. Matter of fact, we yeah. were at the track doing this and it was uh, 105 degrees. So this one was uh, too way short. Too big. That's too big. There wasn't any that were too short. They're all oh, too long. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't think you did. You try it. Okay, let's. That's the one that came here, off. Here, pause this while we think about what we're doing. Okay, so we got the pulley changed. We had to run down to the store real quick and buy another belt. And we need one a little bit longer, but they didn't have the size I wanted. So this will make, this will do. So now we're gonna fire it up. We're gonna check the voltage at the alternator. And then we're gonna run back to the battery and check the voltage. And then I'll have Jay turn the fan and the lights on like we did last time and see if there's a further voltage drop. So, uh, go ahead and let's start her up. Okay, so what's funny here, did you see the voltage just go up? Yep, I mean, just look at it. So... I don't think our alternator is doing anything to the battery. Because it was 12.3 when the car was running. And now it's going up. Turn the switch off. That alternator is not charging its battery, so um, so that was uh, the test didn't show what I wanted it to show, but it showed that the alternator is not the chargeback wire is not uh, charging the battery at all. The alternator is charging, but it's not charging the battery. Interesting. We're clear up to seven twelve point seven five. Are you kidding me? Well, I'm really glad that we tested this today. <laughs> Uh, okay, I'm going to look under the dash for a second, so I can't video that because that's kind of hard. I'm going to take a quick gander and see if I can see what's going on here, and I'll be right back at you. Okay, i got to run this down for you. This has been really, really weird. When we first checked this alternator, if you go back to the beginning of the video, you'll see when I checked this alternator, it was sporting like 21 volts or something like that. I've never seen an alternator put out 21 volts. I have no clue how it was doing that. But then we went back to the battery and we checked it and we determined that no matter what pulley was on, there was no, the chargeback wire wasn't doing any, anything to the battery. It was just pure battery, battery voltage. So pure battery voltage, when you turn the fans and the light on, it actually pulled more juice out of the battery. The alternator wasn't doing crap but I still couldn't figure out why we were getting 21 volts. Really weird. So after I changed all this stuff and went back there and did some more testing, I found out that this chargeback, this is called a chargeback wire, by the way. It's called a chargeback wire simply because this alternator charges the battery, charges it back. This wire was, wasn't corrected. Let me start over. This wire wasn't connected to the proper spot. It was in some weird location. 
So I changed it back to the positive post where it should be. So this battery run, this battery wire runs directly back to the positive post on the battery now. So now we started up, I just did a quick test. We're gonna do it again right now. We did a quick test. Now this alternator is putting out correctly. It's putting out 14 and a half volts. Again, I can't explain why I was doing 21 volts. Maybe someone smarter than me can answer that. I don't know, it's kind of weird. Is basically just going back to nothing. Maybe it's charging back. I don't know. Anyway, so it's putting out 14 and a half volts. I went back and checked the battery, and now we're getting battery voltage or uh, alternator juice back there. It's 13 and a half volts. I didn't turn the lights and stuff on. It's just fine. But let's check that again just to see. Again, if someone can answer why this was spitting out 21 volts here, I'd like to know. I'm kind of baffled, but whatever. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, let's bug the neighbors again and start the car up. That's always a good day. Ready? Let's fire it up. Oh, the switch off. We got the switch off. Hang on. Oh yeah. Okay. So we're getting, we're having a battery charging. Uh, not, no, our battery is charging now, so we're good. We weren't getting anything before, so that's good. Uh, you see there's no wire here. I actually have the charge back wire hooked to the positive side of this switch instead of going right to the battery, same thing. Uh, another thing you wanna check with a race car is you always wanna make sure that your shutoff switch works. For you guys that don't know, According to NHRA rules, if you ever move your battery to the trunk, you need some way to kill the power. So every car has to have a shutoff switch. The way they test this, you start your car, you let it run, and you turn the switch off, it should kill the ignition. It should kill the car. It, and it does. Something else you should do is you should test it again. Bring the RPMs up a little bit to excite the fuel on the alternator. So 12 to 1500 RPM. And then have someone shut the switch off. Make sure your fan is on, your water pump and all that stuff too. Cause you wanna make sure that at RPM, with the alternator excited, the field excited, and the fan running, you wanna make sure your engine, everything shuts off. Uh, the reason you wanna check that is if your system is not wired correctly, or the chargeback wire is in the cluster feed, it will feed back. So if you get the field excited on the alternator, and you have the fan running, and you hit the switch, and the car doesn't shut off, you can be in a world of hurt. So we got all that tested. Um, so I think that's all we're gonna test for right now. We never did check for a short. Let's check for a short on this thing. Uh, no, I'm gonna, check, I'm gonna check for a short. So we're gonna just check for a short real quick. Uh, I mean, a draw on the battery. I know we're gonna have one because I see a light right here, the switch is on. So you always wanna disconnect the negative side of the battery. Take one battery cable off, like this, and then we're going to connect one end of our test light to the battery lead. <laughs> Easier said than done. I'm just excited we fixed the battery problem. Then make your connection with the test light. We have a bright, bright, we have a definite draw on this battery, and I just want to verify that it's gonna go away it's not gonna go away so we have a lot of juice being sucked out of this battery and this is something I don't like for race car even though we have a kill switch a lot of guys they're always turning their switch off when they go to staging lanes or everywhere 
I, I don't like doing that because it's jump. I mean, that's a big pain in the rear because you always leave the switch off when you get in the car and get all buckled up. Then you got to get unbuckled and get out and turn your switch on. <laughs> yeah. I hate that. So this is going to be the next thing we need to fix. I don't know if we'll have time today because it's already getting dark. But yeah, we have a huge draw on this battery. Again, I already know just by looking that that's part of our draw. We might have more than that drawing. So we'll have to do that for another day. Let's save that for another day. And um, that's what we got. So let's do some recapping. The bad thing is... Oh, where did my big pulley go? Let me get this pulley. Here we go. So the funny thing, this whole test started because I wanted to see the difference in charging between this big pulley and this little pulley. Had we not tested this, we would have never found this problem. I thought it was really strange because this wire should have power all the time. And it only had power when the car was running. It didn't have power when the switch was on or anything. That's really weird. So now it's just correct. So now I'm kind of curious. I still wouldn't put this on. Quite honestly, this is totally not needed in my opinion. Some of you race car gurus might think it's a good thing, but it's not. Keep this one on. So, uh, yeah, I'm really glad we checked that. So, like I say, the next thing we need to do is check for a short on the battery and find out what's drawing the power out. And we'll go from there. So maybe this weekend we'll do some more. Also, going to be around. also, Bruce, wouldn't you like to know the difference between that pulley and that pulley, testing the the uh, amperage between the two? Yeah, but it's a pain in the butt to put this back on. <laughs> yeah. But you know, we can. Why not? So, you know, it might be an interesting video. Let me know in the comments if you guys want to see that. We'll put this pulley back on. And we'll test voltage at the alternator. And back at the battery and then we'll put the small pulley back on because i'm going to leave that one on regardless of the answer but i'd like to see if there's a difference between this pulley and that pulley voltage here and back there i want to see what kind of voltage drop we're getting which we we're 14 and a half here and 13.3 or 4 4 back there so we're losing one volt i'm okay with that because we have a i think we figured we got a 10 gauge wire here so i think we bumped that up to an eight uh, that might help us slow out a little bit, but 13 and a half volts is a lot better than the zero we were getting, so we made progress. So, stay tuned for, I guess, part two, and we'll probably do a part three, because our days are getting short, and it's getting dark.